Perfenidun, Wikipedia article audio. Perfenidun is a medication used for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It works by reducing lung fibrosis through downregulation of the production of growth factors and procollagens I and II. Medical uses It was developed by several companies worldwide, including the original patent holder, Marnac, Intermune Incorporated, Shianogi Limited, and GNI Group Ltd. In 2008, it was first approved in Japan for the treatment of IPF after clinical trials, under the trade name of Pyre Spa by Shianogi. In October 2010, the Indian company Sipla launched it as Perfenex. In 2011, it was approved for use in Europe for IPF under the trade name as Briot. It was approved in Canada in 2012 under the trade name as Briot, and was approved in the United States in October 2014 under the same name. In September 2011, the Chinese State Food and Drug Administration provided GNI Group Ltd with new drug approval of perfenidun in China, and later manufacture approval in 2013 under the trade name of Atuary. In 2014 it was approved in Mexico under the name Ketocell LP, indicated for pulmonary fibrosis and liver fibrosis. There is also a topical form created for the treatment of abnormal wound healing processes. Adverse Effects In Europe, perfenidun is indicated for the treatment of mild to moderate idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It was approved by the European Medicines Agency in 2011. In October 2008, it was approved for use in Japan in India in 2010, and in China in 2011. In October 2014, it was approved for sale in the United States. Gastrointestinal In Mexico it has been approved on a gel form for the treatment of scars and fibrotic tissue and has proven to be effective in the treatment of skin ulcers. Skin Perfenidun is frequently associated with gastrointestinal side effects such as dyspepsia, nausea, gastritis, gastroesophageal reflux disease and vomiting. To reduce the severity of these reactions, perfenidun is to be taken after meals. Hepatic dysfunction Perfenidun is known to cause photosensitivity reactions, rash, pruritus, and dry skin. Patients are usually advised to avoid direct exposure to sunlight, including sun lamps, and to use protective clothing and sunscreening agents. Continuing photosensitivity reactions are usually managed by dose adjustment and temporary discontinuation of treatment if required, along with local symptomatic treatment. Dizziness and Fatigue Perfenidun can increase hepatic enzyme levels, especially those of aspartate transaminase, alanine transaminase, and gamma-glutamyl transpeptidase. Periodic monitoring of hepatic enzyme levels is required during therapy, once before the initiation of therapy, monthly monitoring until six months after initiation of therapy, and three monthly thereafter. Extra precaution is required while prescribing the drug in patients with hepatic impairment and in patients who are concomitantly taking a CYP1A2 inhibitor. The drug is contraindicated in patients who have severe hepatic impairment. Dizziness and fatigue have been reported in patients undergoing perfenidun treatment. Dizziness typically resolves although patients should know how they react to perfenidun before undertaking activities that need mental alertness or coordination. If severe, dose adjustment or treatment discontinuation may be required. Weight loss Interactions 
CYP1A2 inhibitors. Other CYP inhibitors. Weight loss has been reported in patients treated with perfenidun. Doctors should monitor patients' weight and encourage increased caloric intake if necessary. Most drug interactions are mediated by various cytochrome P450 enzymes. Since perfenidun is metabolized through the CYP1A2 enzyme pathway, any drug which inhibits this enzyme is likely to precipitate the toxicity of perfenidun. Concomitant therapy is to be avoided. Fluvoxamine is contraindicated in patients who are on treatment with perfenidun. Other inhibitors of CYP1A2 such as ciprofloxacin, amiodarone, and propafenone should be used with caution. Some perfenidun is also metabolized by CYP enzymes other than CYP1A2. Consequently, strong inhibitors of other CYP systems such as fluconazole, chloramphenicol, floxidin, and peroxidine should be used with caution. Moderate inducers of CYP1A2 such as omeprazole should be used with caution since they might reduce the circulating plasma levels of the drug. Cigarette smoking causes increased clearance of perfenidun by inducing CYP1A2, thereby decreasing exposure to the drug. Patients must be advised to abstain from cigarette smoking while on therapy with perfenidun. Perfenidun has well-established antifibrotic and anti-inflammatory properties in various in vitro systems and animal models of fibrosis. A number of cell-based studies have shown that perfenidun reduces fibroblast proliferation, inhibits TGF-beta-stimulated collagen production and reduces the production of fibrogenic mediators such as TGF-beta. Perfenidun has also been shown to reduce production of inflammatory mediators such as TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta in both cultured cells and isolated human peripheral blood mononuclear cells. These activities are consistent with the broader antifibrotic and anti-inflammatory activities observed in animal models of fibrosis. Perfenidun is administered orally. Though the presence of food significantly reduces the extent of absorption, the drug is to be taken after food, to reduce the nausea and dizziness associated with the drug. The drug is around 60% bound to plasma proteins, especially to albumin. Up to 50% of the drug is metabolized by hepatic CYP1A2 enzyme system to yield 5-carboxyperfenidun the inactive metabolite. Almost 80% of the administered dose is excreted in the urine within 24 hours of intake. In animal models, perfenidun displays a systemic antifibrotic activity and has been shown to reduce biochemical and histopathological indices of fibrosis of the lung, liver, heart, and kidney. Perfenidun demonstrates a consistent antifibrotic effect in several animal models of pulmonary fibrosis. Of these, the bleomycin model is the most widely used model of pulmonary fibrosis. In this model, bleomycin administration results in oxidative stress and acute inflammation, with the subsequent onset of pulmonary fibrosis in a number of animal species including the mouse and hamster. Numerous studies have demonstrated that perfenidun attenuates bleomycin-induced pulmonary fibrosis. One study investigated the effect of perfenidun over a 42-day period after repeated bleomycin administration. Administration of perfenidun minimized early lung edema and pulmonary fibrosis when treatment was initiated concurrently with lung damage. This study evaluated pulmonary protein expression and found perfenidun treatment normalized expression of pro-inflammatory and fibrogenic proteins. Similar reductions in pulmonary fibrosis were observed when perfenidun treatment was delayed until pulmonary fibrosis was established and progressing, 
i.e. when administered in a therapeutic as opposed to a prophylactic treatment regimen. The antifibrotic effect of perfenidone has been further established in animal models of cardiac, renal, and hepatic fibrosis, as well as in Dupuytren's contracture. In these models, perfenidone demonstrated a consistent ability to reduce fibrosis and the expression of fibrogenic mediators. The clinical efficacy of perfenidone has been studied in three phase three, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The first Phase three clinical trial to evaluate the efficacy and safety of perfenidone for the treatment of patients with IPF was conducted in Japan. This was a multi-center, randomized, double-blind, trial in which 275 patients with IPF were randomly assigned to receive perfenidone 1,800 mg slash day, perfenidone 1,200 mg slash day, or placebo, for 52 weeks. Perfenidone 1,800 or 1,200 mg slash day reduced the mean decline in vital capacity from baseline to week 52 compared with placebo. Progression-free survival was also improved with perfenidone compared with placebo. The capacity studies were randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled Phase three trials in 11 countries across Europe, North America, and Australia. Patients with IPF were randomly assigned to treatment with oral perfenidone or placebo for a minimum of 72 weeks. In study 004, perfenidone reduced decline in forced vital capacity. Mean change in FVC at week 72 was 8.0% in the perfenidone 2403 mg slash day group and 12.4% in the placebo group, a difference of 4.4%. 35 of 174 versus 60 of 174 patients, respectively, had an FVC decline of at least 10%. In study 006, the difference between groups in FVC change at week 72 was not significant. Mean change in FVC at week 72 was 9.0% in the perfenidone group and 9.6% in the placebo group. The difference between groups in change in predicted FVC at week 72 was not significant. In May, 2014, the results of the ASCEND study were published. ASCEND is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial that enrolled 555 patients. The results confirmed observations from previous clinical studies that perfenidone significantly reduced IPF disease progression as measured by change in percent predicted forced vital capacity from baseline to week 52. In addition, significant treatment effects were shown on both of the key secondary endpoints of 6-minute walk test distance change and progression-free survival. A pre-specified analysis of the pooled population from the combined ascent and capacity studies showed that the risk of all-cause mortality was reduced by 48% in the perfenidone group compared to the placebo group. A review by the Cochrane Collaboration concluded that perfenidone appears to improve progression-free survival and, to a lesser effect, pulmonary function in patients with IPF. Randomized studies comparing non-steroid drugs with placebo or steroids in adult patients with IPF were included. Four placebo-controlled trials of perfenidone treatment were reviewed, involving a total of 1,155 patients. The result of the meta-analysis showed that perfenidone significantly reduces the risk of disease progression by 30%. In addition, Meta-analysis of the two Japanese studies confirmed the beneficial effect of perfenidone on the change in VC from baseline compared with placebo.
In May 2010, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration declined to approve the use of perfenidone for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, requesting additional clinical trials. In December 2010 an advisory panel to the European Medicines Agency recommended approval of the drug. In February 2011, the European Commission has granted marketing authorization in all 27 EU member states and China FDA granted approval in September 2011. Afterwards, a randomized phase 3 trial was completed in the US in 2014 with regulatory approval in US following shortly after. In Mexico it has been approved in gel for the treatment of chronic wounds and skin injuries and the oral form it is approved for the treatment of pulmonary fibrosis and liver fibrosis. Other research shows that perfenidone may be an effective antifibrotic treatment for chronic liver fibrosis. CYP1A2 Inducers Cigarette Smoking Pharmacology Mechanism of Action Pharmacokinetics History Preclinical Studies in Models of Fibrosis Clinical Trials in Idiopathic Pulmonary Fibrosis Regulatory Progress Research <laughs>